Hi guys and welcome back to the show. Today we continue building the Scandinavian mission style credenza or turntable stand. I'll put a link to the rest of the series up here. Today we're doing the legs. Now this is just a mock-up but we will start by doing some grain matching before the glue up and then the joinery. So stick around. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. So I got these two really beautiful pieces here. Like you can see that they're a quarter sawn. They're going straight across like that, the, the growth rings. And they're really beautiful with, with all of this, these ray rings or the rays here. They're kind of really drawing the eye. And I don't want the legs to do that. I've cut down my, um, my template here to a more now it's the correct width. It's still two centimeters oversized because I want a little bit extra to go. You can see on this side, there's like a, a little bit of waves here. And I want, the, uh, I want the grain pattern to be as straight as possible for the legs. So what I've done is I marked where I want to cut it and brought it over to the side. And then and I've gone through, this one has a really nice pattern on it. But see there's there's absolutely nothing matching on the sides here. Like, like, no matter which way I turn it, there, there's, there's no match. So then I, then I found this piece here, and I checked, like both ways, and so I know if you can see here, this, this growth ring here, it kind of continues over to that side. And further up here, we almost have like a book matched pattern. So I just marked it with a triangle here to find it back. And so this will be one leg. I'm going to glue that up and then I'm going to cut it. It's not too bad either because kind of we got waves going across like that. Oh, there. I think we have it. I think that's it. Let's just see here. You can see this is a completely different pattern. It just doesn't fit at all on this side. There's like, there's nothing. But here, if we slide them a little bit, it's almost like these waves are going across like that. And then you have a book match idea down here. I don't know, I think that looks better. I think we got a winner here, guys. I'm using my homemade 3D printed G clamps as quals to prevent the boards from slipping.
The wood glue won't stick to these playing cards, so they work well preventing the sash clamps from marring the wood, and it gives me an upper hand against Baby Vader when we play Texas Hold'em. I may have gone a bit overboard on the glue, and if you don't have easy access to water in your workshop, using wet wipes to remove excess glue works really well. I had assumed that the coating on these sash clamps were resistant to glue, but you know what they say about assumptions. So out comes my Stanley Handeman H1247. All the legs could have been glued up in one go, but I needed to build some confidence. That is why I did it in two batches. And always remember that squiggly lines make for better adhesion. So these are my new, or new, MFT clamps that I got off Banggood. They really complement my other clamps when using the MFT. And for hand planing my bench is now more of a limitation than my clamps. However I have since found that one of these in combination with a planing stop is the best way to go. It is time to take the legs to final size, and after running them over the planer, I've gave them a shave on the table saw. My original design calls for 40 by 40 millimeters, but starting with 25 millimeters or four quarter rough stock, I had to go to 38 by 38 millimeters, and I still think they look good and not too spindly. Even though my miter saw is not very precise, when the rails are not extended it is still able to cut square. And using a stop lock here I make sure that all the legs are the same length.
You know, I kind of enjoy working with white oak, but man is it prone to tear out. Oh, and as you see here, the placement of the legs have been selected with the best faces forwards. I am basing most of the joinery in this project around my 6mm CMT grooving blade. That means blade change time. Now Luna sent me this 42 tooth count blade that I've been using lately and I find it to be a decent general use blade. But for the joinery I am using the 6mm CMT grooving blade which even fits job site saws. This is the mock-up, and you can see the groove on the right leg there. I intended to make a stopped groove so I didn't have to fill in the groove after the fact. This type of cut would have been a lot safer to do on the router table or with a handheld router. But at the time my router table was not up and running and my cheap handheld router wiggles and doesn't cut straight. And I was also kind of curious if it could be done this way. And Baby Vader agreed. So I'm trying something stupid here so that you don't have to. I'm making start and stop lines on the throat plate here like you would on a router fence. And the 8mm spacing is to give me a 2mm reveal from the face of the leg to the rails. The first cut is just a stopped groove, which is nothing new. But to maintain the same reference face, the next cut is a plunge and a climb cut on the table saw. Now this is not a safe cut, I do not recommend you do this, and like I said, my curiosity about the feasibility of this played a big part here, but it worked, and uh, luckily I am not a cat. I am a Leo though.
So while uh, laying out the lines for the lower mortises, I realized that I screwed up with the, with the grooves because I measured to where the start of the to where the start of the chamfer is going to be and not to where the the bottom of the of the lower rail was apparently so we're going to have to chisel this out afterwards and then fill it I had originally planned a horned tenon here, or a haunted tenon, as Autocorrect wants me to call it, but ultimately it went with an open mortise. If I were to do this again, I would have used a horned tenon to retain more strength in the leg. But then again, this is a turntable stand, not a dining table, so it doesn't need to withstand a lot of racking. On the subject of unsafe cuts, I used my drill press as a plunge router. Again, I do not recommend this, but it was what I had available at the time, and it worked using a 6mm CMT upcut bit. While cutting the lower mortises, I found that making a plunge at the ends first 
and then hogging out the rest was the best solution. That are all the mortises cut, now we need to clean them up and square them off. I have been sent some chisels by Luna, and they need some love before this kind of work. I am taking the bevel to 25 degrees and going for a 5 degree secondary bevel. To start I am using my new Trend Diamond Stone, it is 300 and 1000 grit. And I purchased this King Whetstone uh, some time ago, and it is also 100 and then 6000 grit. So there may be a bit of overlap between the grits, but I still use it anyway. After making the secondary bevel, I use my strop with some green polishing compound to remove the burr. And if you are wondering the reason we use a secondary bevel, it is so that you don't have to sharpen the whole bevel next time you need to sharpen your steel.
Now we will go further in the detail on the joinery in the upcoming videos, but I guess we need some kind of closure. So here is a sneak peek of the matching uh, tenons and my new crosscut sled. But again, that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you will find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that, you can still help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.